Hey everybody, this is an introduction to the Phillips curve. We're going to try to cover all of the basics. The first thing I want you to understand is when you encounter the Phillips curve, you're probably in the latter part of your macroeconomics class. It's at that point in the class that you're ready to really think about the relationship between the inflation rate and the unemployment rate. Two things that we care a ton about in macroeconomics. In fact, I like to say there's two macroeconomic evils. What are those two macroeconomic evils? One is a high inflation rate. We definitely want to avoid that. The other one is a high unemployment rate. We want to also avoid that. So here's what we're doing. We're looking at the macroeconomy and specifically these two variables and how they relate to each other, right? Again, we're trying to avoid high inflation rates and we're trying to avoid high unemployment rates. We want to know, hey, what is the relationship between the inflation rate and the unemployment rate? And right there is a takeaway, right? That the axes are the inflation rate and the unemployment rate. Some students, you know, who are memorizers, they end up putting something like the interest rate here. That doesn't make any sense. But we want to know what we're doing when we're doing the Phillips curve. We're looking at these two things we care a ton about, these outcomes of our macroeconomic activity, the inflation rate and the unemployment rate. The next thing to understand is that the relationship between these two tends to be in the short run inverse, okay? I like to think of it as like a seesaw, all right? When one goes up, the other goes down. When one goes up, the other one goes down. They're inversely related generally, okay? When the inflation rate goes up, the unemployment rate goes down. And just to tell you guys, when does that inflation rate go up? When the economy is booming, right? That's when the inflation rate goes up. And guess what? The unemployment rate goes down. The unemployment rate goes up during recessions, and during recessions, the inflation rate tends to come down. The relationship between these two tends to be inverse in the short run. Why is it inverse? Well, for that, we can relate it to the ASAD model. What I want students to know when they think of the ASAD model is which of the two curves, the SRAS or the AD, is more unstable. It's so important that students understand this in a macroeconomics class. What's more unstable, total production or total spending? And the answer is AD, total spending. So I want you to think of that AD curve as being somewhat unstable, that it's subject to far more shocks. There's more demand shocks than supply shocks. Supply shocks are real and they can happen, but there are more demand shocks, generally speaking. AD tends to be more unstable. It's moving along that SRAS curve. And when that AD curve shifts to the right, total spending increases, we get higher prices, right? The inflation rate tends to go up. And guess what? The unemployment rate tends to go down. There's that inverse relationship that this curve is showing. And if AD shifts to the left, okay, well, the inflation rate tends to come down. The ASAD model actually says the price level goes down, which is actually deflation, but oftentimes we just get disinflation. The inflation rate tends to come down when that AD curve shifts to the left, when total spending decreases and the unemployment rate again goes up. Again, telling us that, hey, there is an inverse relationship between the inflation rate and the unemployment rate in the short run. And to drive that point home, remember, if we're thinking about AD as being somewhat unstable, shifting along a fairly stable SRAS, well, that is, what does this SRAS stand for? Short run aggregate supply. So in the short run, there's this inverse relationship between these two variables. So there we go, we've got the SRPC. Now, in the long run, there is no relationship between the inflation rate and the unemployment rate. And that is represented by this LRPC line right here, this vertical line. But to understand that, let's again head back to the ASAD model. You can imagine a situation where we start off right here in long run equilibrium, right? E sub zero. Well, long run equilibrium, we're at full employment output. Full employment is associated with the natural rate of unemployment, and that's where our LRPC curve is drawn. So if we are at full employment, we're at our natural rate, I'm gonna put a dot right there, call that A, and say A is corresponding to E sub one. Then we get a negative demand shock, right? We get that negative demand shock, AD shifts to the left. 
And again, what we want to associate that with is the inflation rate coming down. The ASAD model actually says we're getting deflation, the price level's going down. But at least if we're not getting deflation, we're at least getting disinflation, that positive inflation rate coming down, all right? And the unemployment rate is increasing as we produce less goods, right? We're going from producing this amount to now this amount. So I'll put my YE right there. So we're producing less, we're letting workers go. So again, from an inflation rate standpoint, it's going down. An unemployment rate, it's increasing. So we are moving along that SRPC curve to the right. Huge takeaway, when AD shifts, we move along the SRPC, okay? When AD shifts, we move along. Again, this shape right here is because AD is unstable. As AD is shifting, that's what this curve is representing, okay? It can handle that shift in the AD curve. Now, what's gonna happen in the long run? Well, from an ASAD model, if we waited on the long run, if we didn't intervene, i.e. waited for wages to fully adjust, since we have positive cyclical unemployment, a surplus of available workers, wages would eventually go down. And when wages go down, hey, that shifts the SRAS curve. So actually we put E sub one just to catch up a little bit. Wages go down, that shifts the SRAS curve. It would shift to the right, we put that right there at E sub two, SRA, S two, we put a zero right there. All right, so that's what would happen in the long run from an ASAD model, and you can see we return to full employment. So as far as this graph is concerned, we need to return to full employment. We need to say, hey, we're back at full employment. We must be back at our natural rate. Well, take a look at what happened here. The SRAS shifted to the right. That's gonna mean that we're producing more. We're gonna hire more workers, okay? So the unemployment rate is actually gonna go down. And the inflation rate may also go down, okay? At least will not go up, right? It's definitely not going up as SRAS shifts to the right. You see that price level going down. The ASAD model is actually calling it saying that's more deflation. For sure, the inflation rate's not gonna go up. So it's either gonna go down or stay the same. Now, in a Phillips curve model, what we're gonna do is we're gonna represent that as, hey, again, I have to return to the NRU because we're back again to full employment. I have to return to the NRU. I need my unemployment rate to decrease. And so we put our dot C right there associated with E2, S-R-P-C. This is zero and one right there, okay? So we see in the long run, hey, there is no relationship between the inflation rate and the unemployment rate, all right? There is no trade-off between the two. We are back to the same unemployment rate, but a lower inflation rate, okay? So no trade-off in the long run. In the long run, we're always gonna head back to our natural rate of unemployment. We're always gonna end up there. And our inflation rate could be higher or lower. That was a negative demand shock. And then the uh, long run adjustment. We could have done a positive demand shock. That would have brought us over to this side of the LRPC. So we could have done a positive demand shock, bringing us over to this side of the LRPC. Then of course, if we had that positive demand shock, wages would go up as that labor market tightened, as we had less available workers out there, right? Because you get that increase in demand, that's gonna lead to more production and more hiring. And when you're trying to hire above full employment, that means you're Cyclical unemployment is negative, representing very few available workers, putting upward pressure on wages. Wages would eventually go up and that SRAS curve would shift to the left, right? AD shifts to the right, wages go up. When wages go up, SRAS shifts to the left. That would have been represented by us moving along the curve when that AD shifted to the right. Okay, let's just call that dot D. When that SRAS shifted back to the left, putting us back at long run equilibrium, back in full employment, back at the natural rate. We would put our dot back on the LRPC, all right, and put our dot E in a new SRPC curve. I'll just call that prime. So some major takeaways for this introduction. Number one, we're looking at two things we care a ton about, the inflation rate and the unemployment rate. Number two, 
the relationship between those in the short run is inverse. Why? Because AD tends to be the more unstable curve. And when AD is shifting to the right, the inflation rate's going up, the unemployment rate's going down, that's that inverse relationship. When AD shifts to the left, unemployment rate's going up, the inflation rate's going down. Again, that's that inverse relationship. That's what gives us that downward sloping SRPC curve. But in the long run, there is no relationship between the unemployment rate and the inflation rate, which I'm trying to show here with basically this dot A, the dot E, and the dot C. Take a look at that. In the long run, hey, we're at our natural rate. We're going to return to full employment. We're going to return to our natural rate of unemployment. But hey, we could have an inflation rate down here or an inflation rate right here, which I had at 2%, or an inflation rate up here. There is no relationship between the unemployment rate and the inflation rate in the long run. You can have all kinds of different inflation rates all associated with your natural rate of unemployment. Again, in the long run, you're returning to your natural rate of unemployment. These two graphs, they don't perfectly sync together, but they certainly work fairly well together. And we need to be able to relate what's going on in our macro economy to both graphs. I hope that helps you out with doing that. We're gonna have other videos to really understand this graph a little bit better, but that was your introduction. We'll see you in the next video.